So let's have a look at some of the settings. Uh, we'll start off with the source air. So this is basically the settings for this object about how it's going to produce, what level of detail it's going to produce this air, which is then going to be simulated by the air simulator. Um, so the first one is general tab here. Turn it on and off. Start frame, end frame. If you need an end frame, you can turn it on there. Next one is resolution, which is the important one for how detailed your simulation is going to be, which we've talked about before in many sort of different cases. Um, so <clears throat> let's just have a look at this. So I'm just going to make a volume scope. It lets us see what's going on with the voxels. So I'm just going to plug that into that, and then plug that back into there. If you sometimes get this sort of error when you do this sort of thing, um, it's usually because, as I was saying in that other video, that it sometimes it tries to guess what ports you're putting these in. And before I had the volume scope, I just had this sim air going into that one. If I put that back, it should be fine because that's what it's expecting. Um, but when I put that one in, it errors. What you do in this case is you either disconnect that, delete that, and then reconnect it. And it will be fine now because it's sort of re sort of defined that port. You will have extra biffs that you've made, um, so you can delete one. Or if I control Z all this. Okay. Um, you can just give it its own output. And that will solve that problem. Um, right, so these are the voxelized space around the object. As you can see it's pretty big. Um, what we can do is if we go down to here to multi res display, if I put that to 10, it will give you 10 levels of this voxelization. And as it gets further away from the object, you can see that they get larger and larger and larger and larger. And this is this sort of adaptive resolution that's going on. So this allows you to do, you know big smoke trails without having to sort of define that area at the very start it will on the fly up res this sim as it sort of travels through space um, so you can see every the amount, I'm only showing 10 here, if I'm up to 20 it'll probably show more and keep going out and out and out, you can see it basically does it for the whole world um, but at ever ever higher size, whatever bigger size it's in lower resolution basically but then this will, will change on the fly as it goes through. Um, so that's showing that. So if I zoom back in, put it back down to one. So if we go to our source there and have a look at the resolution modes. So we've got two modes, absolute and relative. Relative is the voxelization of the space around the object will be relative to the size of the object. Um, this can be handy if you're bringing in, you know, you've made this graph and you've saved it and you bring it into a scene where the scale is larger. If you had it at absolute, because that's a world space voxelization, the density would be really dense, you know, the detail would be really dense straight away. Whereas relative, it will always be relative to the object. So that can be quite handy and stop freezing and, you know, crashing machines. But as you see, when we change it to relative, I mean, to absolute, it's not very high res in this sort of situation, you have to crank it down, but absolute is world space unit, so you can sort of, gives you more of a, it's not relying on the shape of this object. So this is now the resolution that's around the object. Um, and if I hit play, we can see it progressively growing upwards. So this, Adaptive resolution, which is growing through the scene. I'll pull that back a bit. And here we can see the uh, the voxel cubes growing. Not going too far back there. And it's displaying things like velocities as well. Anyway, so let's just stop that. So um, if I rewind this, we've got actually two modes of resolution here. One is the geo detail size and one is the fluid detail size. The geo detail size is how, because this uh, uh, platonic sphere 
um, will be voxelized to emit from, this is the detail that's going to be. So if you crank that up to a larger number, you may see something. Yeah, so you can see now actually, this is the sort of emission area. We've gone, and if you had quite finely detailed objects, this would look quite chunky and clunky around it. So you might have to go back to the sort of 0 05 and actually maybe two, see if it gets any dense cl closer. It gets a little bit closer, so you don't have to go too mad on this one. Um, this one's the really important one because this is the level of detail in the simulation itself. Um, I'm going to leave it set to that for the time being. And as a rule of thumb, you can always make this one slightly bigger than this one, so I'm just going to put that to sort of 0.8. <clears throat> so the next uh, properties we've got here is the air one, um, and this is where you sort of control the initial state of the uh, smoke as it's being emitted into the scene. So we have a fog density, that's how dense it's going to be. So let me just turn off, we don't need this volume scope now, I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, just leave it like that. So, play, I'm going to see some fog form, smoke forming, like so. If I stop that, and then we go back to here. If I they crank this up to 20, and then rewind. You can see immediately this smoke is denser. It's a lot thicker. So we can do we control that there. Um, let's put that back to 2.5. And then we have um, these modes, rate, and you have them here for temperature. So you've got rate, add, subtract, over, min, max, multiply. And they're a bit like blend modes in Photoshop or Nuke. You're sort of blending the this density over into the simulation. I am a little bit vague about how this sort of works um, and the benefits of it, if I'm honest. I never seem to really understand what most of them are doing, apart from obviously I know they're subtracting from it, but um, so if I did subtract to see what happens. Rewind that and hit play. Probably won't see anything. Yep, so we're subtracting, I guess, 2.5 from it all. Anyway, so the two modes I use generally on this one are either rate, sorry, let's stop this, rewind, either rate, which is like emits into the fluid or the smoke simulation as a rate of adding 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, or set, which means it will just be. 2.5 from the get-go and just stay at 2.5 and you can see it sort of did the whole area around that more whereas if I do rate you can see it didn't voxelize it wasn't smoke all the way around the object it's sort of building up density um, so and the same will be happening for temperature as well. So, temperature when it's just smoking, we're not talking about fire, is really the sort of buoyancy of it, how quickly it will go up. Um, by default, in the solver settings, the ambient temperature is set to 20. So if you have anything below 20, it's not gonna rise, it's actually gonna sink. Um, and if you have something at 20, well, let's do I'm going to put this at 10, see if it sinks. Mm, it's just only slightly raising up. I'm presuming that's because it's not going to sink, it's because of this uh, buoyancy, actually, I think, on the solver here, isn't there? Yeah, so we have a naval buoyancy. So it is being forced up, even without the uh, temperature thing. Um, I wonder if I made it a minus number, just to see what would happen. I don't want to get too bogged down in this squad. I'll go through, but let's try and minus 100. See what happens. We can see it is coming out the bottom now. So that would be something like dry ice, which is colder than the environment. You know, it sort of bleeds over the floor. Um, so one of the things to sort of take from all this is 
everything that's going on here is really physically accurate to the world. Um, it's using a lot of new, well not new, but higher math than most other fluid simulators to sort of generate all this stuff. So they've done tests with it uh, and it sort of it mimics almost exactly how real world fluids, smoke, uh, will rise or change and things like that. Um, obviously there's a s certain level of, they're not exactly the same, so that would be mathematically probably very difficult, but uh, they are very close to what's going on in the real world. Anyway, let's move on. So uh, again, we've got rate or add, so you know, if I put that to add, it would just, it's not going to add it, it's just going to be straight there, not add, I mean, set I wanted. You can see as it's going up quicker now, it's adding more temperature to it, so it's over I stop that yet. Um, but if we do set, there we go. Rewind, play. All right, and so that's that. Um, let's just put that back to rate for the time being. So the next one is an initial speed, which. Uh, we can crank up and then this is the direction XYZ so I'm gonna go uh, let's try in which way is X? That way is X is it? Or that way? Use that way. Uh, let's try 10. I should just do one. It's a directional thing, yes. One's enough but you can sort of, anyway we'll talk about cranking those up later. Um, oops, sorry I've got to rewind it to the beginning otherwise it doesn't work. There we go. Oh it's going that way. So you can see it's slightly moving along in the X. There we go, it's puffing out that way. So that we can control direction there. Um, stop that one. And then we get the same mode for speed. And then we've got inherent velocity. So if this was, object was moving, if you wanted it to sort of travel along and inherit the speed of it and move with it, you would crank that up. Um, if you make this negative numbers, um, it will shoot it away from the moving object which is very good for doing sort of like rocket trails and things like that. Um, trail smoothness is a smoothing, let's read what it says in the bottom here ba -ba -bum. Uh, the smooth of the smoke emitted in the presence of large source velocities. If the tr emitted trail smoke has too much noise or obvious holes, trail smoothness can be increased to increment in increments of one to reduce such artifacts. Um, yeah, so it's going to smooth out your smoke, basically. Right, so that's the source air. Next video we'll look at um, the next one, either collider or the settings.